Hi, this is Pat Welsh with the Legacy Team here at Keller Williams Memorial. I'm, uh, I'm here today to answer some questions that I've been asked by clients and folks on a number of occasions about inspections. Um, the number one question, why do I need an inspection? Well, of course, the answer becomes obvious that uh, um, to buy a piece of property, a buyer really wants to understand the conditions uh, that, that reflect the, the property. You want, you want to know all about it, you want to know as much as you can learn prior to closing on the sale. You know, when you go to buy a pair of shoes, you can try them on. When you buy a house, you can't quite do the same thing. So the inspection is the equivalent of trying it on. The, uh, uh, the inspection is the critical component for the buyer to understand as much as you can about the house before you buy. Uh, the second question, what does an inspection cost and how long does it take? A typical inspection runs about $350 or $400 for an average size house. It typically takes between two and four hours. And what I suggest to my clients is to uh, let the inspector get in there and start working the inspection first thing in the morning. And then the, as the buyer, you can come on in at the latter uh, 15 or 20 percent of the inspection. So if it's going to be four hours, show up you know, after three or three and a half hours, then walk through with the inspector and get his first-hand account of his findings. Don't be there for the whole inspection. It's too distracting and takes too much time for the, the inspector to, to talk with you. Get the, get the highlights when he's finished. What's my role uh, in the inspection. Well, the number one thing, of course, is the buyer is going to pay for the inspection, and the inspection is going to, the results is going to belong to the buyer. So you need to be there to pay the inspector and to do the review. Um, what gets inspected? Wow, there's a lot. Uh, there are a lot of components to an inspection. To touch on, on most of the things, the heating and air conditioning systems are inspected. You run the air conditioners, you measure the, the inspector measures the differential of the temperatures. He looks at the, um, the operating condition of the systems. He, he looks inside of the, the various parts that he can access easily. <clears throat> he looks at the electrical system, the electrical box, the breakers, the, uh, uh, the wiring that it, that's accessible. He looks at the light switches and outlets and a variety of different things. He looks at the plumbing systems, the water, the hot and cold water, the water heater. Uh, he looks for drips and leaks and things of that nature. He looks at the roof pretty critically. A roof's a big component. Um, either visually, sometimes they use binoculars, oftentimes an inspector will actually grab a ladder and climb up on the roof. They look at the granularity of the shingles and the overall condition so that they can report to the, you, the buyer, what the roof condition and longevity is likely to be. They look at the slab, but not the same way that a, an engineer would. The inspector looks at, for tattletale signs of, of, of uh, shortcomings in the slab. If they find anything that's, uh, like most of the systems, that's critical and, and calls for alarm, they may call in and ask for additional support from a foundation guy, from a heating and air conditioning guy, an electrician, and so forth. The uh, <clears throat> inspector looks at the grade of the, of the yard around the house. How, does, how is it likely to drain? Is there going to be puddling? Could a hard rainfall back up into the house? Things of that nature for the grade is important. Uh, the, the inspector looks at all of the appliances. He runs the dishwasher, the, uh, uh, the garbage disposal, the, any of the components that are going to be remaining at the house. He looks at those and reports on those uh, conditions as well. Who picks the inspector? This is strictly the buyer's concern. The buyer picks the inspector, pays for the inspection, and the inspection belongs to the buyer. But oftentimes it's shared with other parties, and we'll talk about some of the reasons that that might be. Um, when you pick an inspector, you can pick anyone you want. You don't have to use the inspector that any agent recommends to you, although it's worth listening to because 
uh, unless you know somebody, how, are you, how can you pick the best inspector? You might rely on, on some recommendations from your real estate agent in that case. <clears throat> what if repairs are called for and um, who pays for repairs? Well, uh, there are always going to be some things called for. It's, it's common place to find shortcomings. There aren't any perfect houses any more than there are perfect people. Uh, who pays? It, it's always a negotiation. Um, the, uh, the interesting thing is that sometimes you get code violations. You get uh, things that don't meet the building code, the electrical code, plumbing codes, all those sorts of things. But it's never the responsibility of the seller to pay for those things or to fix them. Um, it's always a negotiation. So when you negotiate the price in the beginning, if you press really, really hard, the, the seller oftentimes is reticent to, to give relief on the repairs. But it's all negotiable. What about a new home? Should I get an inspection on a new home? This is a good one. Uh, people will think that because you have a warranty and be, from a new home builder, that it's not necessary to get a, an inspection. Um, I absolutely disagree with that. I think it's a great value for the buyer to pay for an inspection on a new home because new home construction is just as likely to have shortcomings as an existing house. And um, by working with an inspector and the builder in concert, you can get a lot of things rectified. We've got a lot of horror stories about um, you know, subcontractors that work for a builder that make mistakes and inspectors find them. Um, reports. The, the inspector is generally going to publish a report within a day or two of the inspection. He's going to typically email it to the, uh, the buyer. It's got photographs, it's got a lot of dialogue, it's got all of the findings of the report. It's a good lever to use to negotiate with the seller for concessions on the purchase. Um, and lastly, you want to talk about an inspection that is almost always done as well, called a wood destroying insect or termite report. Uh, this is often called for by the lender, the, the buyer's lender, and, and it's a necessary component. So oftentimes the, the structural and mechanical inspector, the guy we were talking about from the beginning, works together with a preferred WDI or uh, wood destroying insect, insect inspector. They often do those inspections at the same time. Different people, different licenses for those people, but both very critical components of the home buying process. I hope this helps a little bit in clarifying some of the things around inspections. It's a very, very important part of real estate. Uh, if I can answer any questions, I'm always, always available for, for my clients and for interested parties to aid in, in helping them get the best deal in the best conditions in their real estate transaction.